This is a brief video on pharyngeal arches and how they develop and what they turn into during human embryonic development. As you know, pharyngeal arches are six arches that are present in the embryonic stage of human development, and the fifth pharyngeal arch actually goes away. So we're going to be talking about arches one, two, three, four, and six as they're listed across the left. We're going to be talking about their skeletal derivatives, their muscular derivatives, and what the major artery in each arch turns into. So let's begin with arch one. Arch one is also called the mandibular arch. It's innervated by V3 of the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve has three main branches, and arch 1 is innervated by V3. This is cranial nerve 5. The skeletal derivatives of arch 1 can be broken down into two subdivisions. We have the upper jaw and the lower jaw. Let's start with the maxillary process, or the upper jaw, which eventually develops into the maxilla, the zygomatic bone, and the squamous part of the temporal bone. During development, the two maxillary processes fuse with the medial nasal process that comes in from the top, and this forms our upper lip and jaw. If you have an abnormality or if this does not fuse normally, you're going to get a cleft lip, uh, and it's called a cleft lip if the mismatch, if it does not connect anterior to the incisive foramen. It's called a cleft palate if it doesn't connect posterior to the incisive foramen. So this is a cleft lip and palate, this top image right here. We can see that the cleft lip is anterior to the incisive foramen. Just to get you oriented, we're looking at the roof of someone's mouth. The cleft lip includes, includes some misalignment, some misjoining of the palate and the lip, whereas the cleft palate is this part down here. So this would be a unilateral cleft lip and palate, and this would be a cleft palate in this bottom image here. Now let's talk about the lower jaw, the mandibular process, which is derived from a cartilage called mechal cartilage. This forms bones including the mandible, the spinomandibular ligament, the incus, and the malleus. And the incus and malleus are two small bones in the ear. The mandibular process fuses in the midline to form the lower jaw, and there's rarely an abnormality there. It's, it's more the cleft lip and cleft palate from the upper jaw that are more common. Some muscle derivatives from arch 1 include the muscles of mastication. This includes the temporalis muscle, the masseter muscle, and the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. Other muscles that are derived from arch 1 include the mylohyoid, the anterior belly of the digastric muscle, the tensor villi palatini, and the tensor tympani. And finally, the major aortic arch, aortic arch 1, becomes part of the maxillary artery. Now let's talk about arch 2, also called the hyoid arch. This is innervated by the facial nerve, which is cranial nerve 7. Some skeletal derivatives of arch 2 come from what's called the Reichert cartilage. And these include bones such as parts of the hyoid bone, the styloid process, the stylohyoid ligament, and the stapes, which is that third small bone in the, in the ear. Muscle derivatives from arch 2 include the muscles of facial expression, of which there are many, the posterior belly of the digastric, the stylohyoid, and the stapedius. And then the major arch, the major artery, aortic arch 2, becomes the stapedial artery in the fully developed human. Last three arches. We have less information about them. We can go through them pretty quick. Arch 3, innervated by the glossal pharyngeal nerve. That's cranial nerve 9. Skeletal derivatives of arch 3 include the body and the greater horn of the hyoid bone. So part of the hyoid bone comes from arch 2. The rest of it comes from arch 3. Muscle derivatives of arch 3 is the, the major one is the stylopharyngeus and the the big aorta or the big uh, artery from arch three becomes the common carotid and part of the internal carotid so the carotids come from arch three arch four innervated by the vagus nerve this is cranial nerve 10. skeletal derivative is the thyroid cartilage the muscle derivatives are the cricothyroid the pharyngeal constrictor and the levator villi palatini the big artery from arch 4 becomes two different vessels in the fully developed human, depending on the right and the left side. The right aortic arch from arch 4 becomes the subclavian artery, whereas the left aortic arch from arch 4 becomes the arch of the aorta. This is what we normally think about as the aortic arch, the big curving arch on the left side of the human body coming directly out of the heart. 
Arch 6, innervated also by the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10. Skeletal derivatives of Arch 6 include the cricoid, the arytenoid, the corniculate, and the cuneiform cartilages. Muscle derivatives from Arch 6 are all the laryngeal muscles except for the cricothyroid muscle. And the aortic arch from Arch 6 becomes the pulmonary arteries. Now I've summarized all this information in a table here for your reference. Uh, most of the stuff is worth knowing, especially the innervation of each of the arches, uh, which is cranial nerves 5, 7, 9, and 10. And it's, it's probably worth knowing a couple of skeletal muscular derivatives and definitely what the aortic arches become in the fully developed human. This has been a short review of arches of the developing human. I hope this was helpful.